It's day two already. Thank you for starting this journey with me. My name is Fumilayo from Pet Media, and today we will be talking about input statements. Have you ever wondered how you can get input from your user while coding? This is the video to see. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. And now to the screen. Day two. Let's go. Welcome to day two of the 100 days Python programming. Day two. And today we'll be talking about input statement. Input statement is very important and it's exactly how it sounds. It allows a program to take a user input and it is especially useful when you want to try to interact with the program. It's just like filling a form, but not necessarily a form, but it gets the input from the user. So whatever the user types, it treats it as a string unless you specify or you're able to convert and so on. So this is exactly how it should look like. You have your variable, and then you use the word input. You have to use input, and then what you want to collect from the user. So variable, this is where the input is stored, and this is the message displaying. you are displaying to the user to tell them what to input. So let me show you a very, very simple example. So imagine you want to collect information about the user's name. This is how you do it. Name equals to input, and then this is the prompt for the user, enter your name, and then you want to print out hello name. If you're wondering why this is like this, you should check out our day one video, which is about concatenation and print function. So let's run this. You see, enter your name, that is the prompt that was given, and then enter your name. My name is Fumi Lyo, and then you click enter, and it shows hello Fumi Lyo. So you see here, we've been able to prompt the user to enter its name, and then we print out hello Fumi Lyo. So there on step two is converting the input into other type. By default, it treats everything like a string, but if you want it to treat the like a float or an integer, I said you would have to specify. So now let's imagine that you want to ask the you know, the user to enter their age, for example. Your, an age is always an integer. So you have to first write integer first, and then input, and then the other bracket, and do not forget it's a string. So enter your age. And now we want to print what do we want to print? We want to print the age that the user would be next year. So this is our. So this simply means that we're trying to add one to whatever age our user would be next year. So you would be whatever the user enters plus one next year. So when we run this, see enter your age. So 21, and then you click on enter, you would be 22 next year. So we are converting this input into an integer, and then we're adding plus one, and then converting it to a string, so it can then be printed out. And in the, yes, it is converts the input to an integer, and do that if the user enters something that can't be converted to a number. Okay, let's try to write. Um, instead of an integer, let's try to write a float. Let's write five, uh, no, float, a string, and then click on enter. You get an error because it is not an integer. You will be six next year. So now we have done integer. Let's see an example for float. And a good example for float would be like your height. Your height, you had a one, 1.8 meters, 1.7 meters, whatever. It uh, depends on how tall you are. So float is with a decimal point. So we have the float and then input, enter your height in meters. And then we want to print that your height is that meters. So you run. And now to enter your height of float, so 1.80. And then you see your height is 1.8 meters. And you can also use like multiple input statements because we have been using just one input. There are cases where you want to have multiple 
multiple inputs and that is very much possible. So I want to copy this. This is like the name of the person and then the age. We want to also get their age. We want to get their height. And then let's get their city, what city they are from. So we have input, enter your city. And then we want to print out the output that we've gotten. I'm going to be using F string. Again, F string, it's in our first video. So check it out. So then in my curly braces, I would have name is age years old and I also want to have the height H I G A T tall and lives in city. And then the final quotes, do not forget this. So you see what we did here? We're getting the user's name, age, height, and the city where they live in. So you can print out the, the name of the person is this age, is this tall, and lives in this city. So now let's run this. Enter your name. I'll enter my name. Enter your age, 65, your height, 1.80, the city, Frankfurt. And you get your print. So Familia is 65 years old and 1.8, I should have added meters, meters tall and lives in Frankfurt. So these are the ways that you can use inputs in Python. These are like the simplest ways. And these are practice questions for you to try out. So try them out, put your solution in the comment section. And as always, this Jupyter notebook will be available in my GitHub. Link is in the description. That's it for this video. Do not forget to like, to subscribe, to share, and to leave a comment. And the link to the notebook that we worked on is available in my GitHub. Link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I'll see you tomorrow.